Hey, uh, welcome to part three of uh, disk management. Uh, in this section, we're going to look at um, creating file systems. And from there, we're going to look at mounting those file systems. We'll look at persistently mounting those file systems. Uh, this part four will be uh, the logical volume management or LVM. So we're not going to deal with LVM in this section, but we're going to deal with um, ext4, uh, XFS, and swap uh, file systems. Let's go ahead and get started. Let me share my screen out. All right, so specifically um, in terms of mapping back to the, the objectives here for the, uh, the RHCSA, um, let me go ahead and zoom in here. What we're going to look at here is we're going to look at creating, mounting, and unmounting file systems here uh, using uh, VFAT. Uh, we are not going to be looking at the uh, LVM piece, but we're going to learn how to mount. We're going to learn how to... Uh, unmount file systems. We're going to learn how to do that both through the uh, the UID and also by label. So you'll see there up at the top uh, this piece here. Configure systems to mount file systems at boot. Okay, so we're going to make this persistent. We're going to learn how to make sure that it happens when the system boots. And it says by UUID or label. Now, when we talk about what does that mean, this is one of those situations where I guess it's open to interpretation. Are they talking about knowing how to do it both ways or knowing how to do it one way or the other. Um, safest bet, I guess, is always to make sure that you know how to do it uh, both by label and by uh, universally unique ID. That's probably the, uh, the best way to go. So let's go ahead and um, take a look here. So I'm connected into my server here. I guess the first thing that I'm going to do, because we're going to be dealing with uh, disk operations, I need to either start an interactive sudo session or uh, SU out to root. I remember the password. All right, verify that I am in fact root and I am. So there's a couple tools to see what partitions you have. Um, things we looked at in the uh, uh, in part two of the uh, the F disk utility. So I've got a hard drive out here at DevVDA, and so if I do an F disk, and I'm gonna do F disk minus L just to list my partitions. Okay, so you'll see that I've created uh, three partitions here. They're all two gig in size. I created two. Linux partitions, and then I also have this one uh, Linux swap partition down here. So <clears throat> right now, those partitions don't have a file system. You know, obviously, I'd want to verify that the uh, that the kernel sees those partitions, and we could do that by just doing a cat proc uh, partitions. And there's VDA one and VDA two and VDA three, so we're good to go there. Give myself a green check. <laughs> that the kernel does see those partitions, so I think we are ready to operate. Another tool to, you know, view the partitions on your system is the uh, ls block or ls uh, blk. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, um, first thing we're going to do here is let's just deal with uh, XFS. And actually, creating a file system, you know, is uh, pretty straightforward, right? So I could say mk. MKFS, and you notice if I tab a couple times here, there's a lot of different options there. So I could say MKFS.XFS, and then I would say dev EDA1. That's going to go ahead and create the file system. It happens pretty rapidly and really not a very difficult process. Now, in order to mount a file system, um, you have to have a mount point. And the mount point is a directory, so I'm just going to go ahead and make a directory. And I'll just off root here, use my initials here, RDN1, okay, and just make sure that that file system mounts okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do a mount. Okay. And <clears throat> the, so this, this will not be a persistent mount, right? But this is a way of testing uh, the file system. Uh, as with any of these um, uh, commands, you know, you do have your, um, You've got your man pages and things like that uh, for help, but I'll say mount dev VDA1 to RDN1. Okay. Now, to verify that that's mounted, uh, the DF command is probably the best way to do it. Um, common options here with DF, you can do a cap T for the type of file system, H for human readable format. And so you'll see here, if we look down at the bottom there, 
WDA1 is an XFS file system. It's two gig in size and it's mounted to RDN1. Okay, so good to go there. Um, the <clears throat> to make a file system mount persistently, we have to add it to a specific file. We have to add information excuse me, information about that file system to a specific file. And that file is the Etsy FS tab file. Now, you know, on the, on the exam, there's two things that are really important um, in, to me, and that would be speed and accuracy. Okay? You need to be able to do things quickly because you're working against the clock, and the faster you can get task one done, that's more time for task two and task three and task four. Um, and you need to do things accurately, right? You need to verify that they work. So um, first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and unmount that file system so i'm going to use the umount command to unmount that file system i'll rerun my df command verify that the file system is unmounted all right now we're going to go ahead and make sure that that file system persistently mounts and the file that we need to modify here is the etsy fs tab file all right so here's what i do okay now you'll notice here that if you look at the syntax here, the FS tab, we have the um, we have the UUID. This could also be the label, okay? and then from then we have the mount point, and then we have the file system that it's using, and then we have the options, defaults, and then zero zero. Now, what I do so there's a couple different options here. Okay, so <clears throat> we can run commands from inside of um, inside BI Improve. So the first thing I do is I do a Tap G to bring my cursor down to the uh, the bottom of the file here. Now, <clears throat> there's some different things that you can do. Let me kind of show you some different options on how you can mount this by UUID pretty quickly. Now, I could mount it by label. Let me show you that first. So I'm just going to do a I'll do an O to get a new line, and then if I'm doing it by label, and I would say Dev BDA one. Okay. And then the mount point, the RDN1, okay. and then the file system type, in this case, uh, F XFS, and then default, zero, zero. Okay. And so that would be mounting it by label. Now, with a virtualized virtual machine, that's a pretty safe way to do it, but you know, it, it it is more popular to mount these uh, file systems by their UUID. But if you look at the UUID, it's an incredibly large number. And for me to take the time to like write that down or something like that, that would just take too long. And right, we're dealing with speed and accuracy. So first thing I'm gonna do here is get rid of that line that I just created. And let me show you a couple different techniques that you could use to get that UUID transferred into the um, the FS tab file quickly. So one way we, is I could run the block ID command uh, from inside VI. So I just do a colon bang in order to run a command and then I say block ID. Okay. From there, you'll see there I get the block ID command running. And if I'm in the GUI, then it's pretty simple. I could just highlight that UUID. I could, you know, I could right click and I could say copy, press enter, to continue, press O again to give me a new line, drop me into insert mode, and then I could just right click and I could say paste, and that's one way to get the UUID in. Okay. Now, <clears throat> another way that you could do it, okay, and let me just show you that way as well, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that line, is if I use a colon R, normally we use like colon R to bring the contents of another file into the uh, into a file, but in this case, I could say colon R and then bang and then run that block ID command and that would just drop the content to that file. Now, it's really easy to delete lines in VI, right? You just press DD and so I'm only interested in the VDA1 line, so I could just start deleting lines. Now, if I want to delete a word, I could say DW and then I could go to the end of my line, move my cursor onto the word type, press capital C, that'll delete the rest of the line and drop me automatically into insert mode. So now I just say RDN1, that's my mount point, and then the file system type, which is XFS, okay, and then 
default and zero zero. Now you may know that having a problem in the FS tab file will prevent your system from booting normally. You can imagine that that's going to affect your your end result on you know a practicum type test. You know if your system can't boot, um, you know that that's going to affect your result. Let's leave it there. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and save that file now to quickly test that. Okay. What I always recommend is you just do a mount minus A, and that'll attempt to mount everything that's defined in your FS tab file. And then I like to see the output verbosely, so I put a V on it. Okay. Now, <clears throat> first time you mount the file system when you just create it, you're going to see this error. Uh, RDN1 does not contain uh, SE Linux labels. Um, don't worry about that. Okay, what we're looking for here is the successfully mounted. Okay, that's what we want to see. All right, so <clears throat> let's repeat that. Okay, for um, VDA2, except we'll use the ext4 file system. So again, I'll just say mkfs. And again, if you forget, you know what the uh, command is, just press tab twice. It'll command complete. And we want to do ext4, um, and then we're going to say dev VDA2. Okay. All right, makes a file system. We're going to make a directory. We're going to call that directory RDN2. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go ahead and we'll mount it. Sure, I'll mount it quickly to test it. So dev VDA2 to RDN2. I'm going to do my, my DF minus DH. There's RDN2, VDA2, everything looks good. All right, that worked. So I'll go ahead and unmount it. So I'll U mount. And you can U mount it by the directory, or I'll just say U mount dev VDA2. That'll work just fine. Confirm that it's unmounted, and it is. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing in the uh, FS tab file. Okay. But I'm going to intentionally make a mistake. So I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, if it doesn't mount properly. So um, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to say VI improved Etsy FS tab. I'm already at the bottom of the file. You can see my cursor there. So I'm just going to say colon R bang. And then this time I'm going to run block ID. But you can run block ID. And if you know your device, you don't. Have, you can avoid having to delete all those other lines. So I'll say colon r bang block id dev vda2. I just get the one line. dw delete word. Put my end here. Press cap c. It'll erase the rest of the line. Drop me into insert mode. So I'll say let's say rdn3. There's our mistake, right? And then ext4 so, Go ahead and save out my changes. I'll go ahead and clear and I'm going to go ahead and say mount minus a v. And then I get the message, mount point RDN3 does not exist. All right, <laughs> pretty straightforward. You know, if I rebooted my system right now, it would not boot properly. And so let's go ahead and fix our changes. And I'm going to go ahead and let's see here. I want to make a, another mistake, though. So I'm going to fix the one change, but I'm going to break it again. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's an ext2 file system and then we're going to go ahead and replace that and make it rdn2 so that's now correct all right <clears throat> so let's go ahead and save those changes let's try our mount minus av again Boop. all right so now we're getting a different error right wrong file system type bad option bad super block so that's typically what you see if you define the wrong file system uh, type and so I go ahead and <clears throat> go back into my file and let's go ahead and correct that. 
And once again, we will try our mount minus AV here. And I get that same message about the uh, Etsy Linux labels. Again, that, that's perfectly normal. The first time you mount the file system, don't worry about that. Um, but it did say that it successfully mounted. Again, I can do my DF minus TH. Now you'll notice, and there's my RDN1, RDN2. Now you'll notice that if I do an F disk and let's do an F disk minus L for dev PDA, we also have this third partition that's defined as swap. Okay. And in order to create a swap partition, which is another thing that's mentioned in the objectives, I'm going to go ahead and say make swap dev PDA3. Mm -hmm. Now, if I say swap on minus S, you'll see that, okay, right now I just have the original swap partition. Okay, if I say swap on, okay, and we'll say dev. VDA3, and I rerun my swap on minus S. See, now that VDA3, my swap partition is mounted, but that is not persistent, okay? If we want this to be a persistent uh, mounting in the file system, then again, we need to go and define that in the FS tab file. So let me go ahead and, well, let's turn it off first. So we'll say swap off dev VDA3. And then back to the FS tab file. Now, again, I could do this by UUID, right? Uh, but let's go ahead and we'll do this one by label. Um, so we'll say dev PDA3. And typically, there will already be a swap partition here where you can see what the syntax is supposed to be. So swap, swap, defaults. And I'll go ahead and save that. Now, if I do a mount minus AV here, mm -hmm. you'll see that it gives me the swap ignored, swap ignored. Now, so if I do a swap on minus S, just the one, okay, uh, swap partition. If we do a swap on minus A, Okay, and then we do a swap on minus S. You'll see that that's how we test whether um, our definition in the FS tab file is working uh, because that swap on minus A will go ahead and mount all of your swap partitions that are currently not mounted that are defined in your Etsy FS tab file. So again, without having to go through a full reboot, that's a quick way of defining that. So we looked at creating uh, ext4 xfs file systems uh, swap file systems we looked at persistently mounting them by uuid and label and that's done through the fs tab file and that should really cover the uh, the objectives uh, as they're listed so got one more uh, piece with this management lvm we'll tackle that in the next video but i uh, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you again soon